Hello, and welcome to the Gaming Manual. Today we'll be covering Fester's Quest for the NES. I will go over the main objective of the game, basic controls, and the different items, what they do and how to use them, as well as where to obtain them. You get one life, two hits initially when you start the game. Hopefully with this guy we will be able to help you through. I think some of them could have been handled a little bit better, such as the continuation system. Looks like a light bulb. When you pick it up, it'll increase it by one. It's used to illuminate the darkness in the sewers. It's not used anywhere else in the game, but you kind of need it if you actually want to be able to travel the sewers and see where you're going. The vice grip is used to speed yourself back up in case you ever get hit by an enemy that slows you down. The money looks like a little red-orange dollar sign, and by picking it up, it gives you one dollar. You can spend these only at the hot dog stand. For five dollars, it restores your health to full. The key is the next item. It's used to open all the doors that you find. You need them to enter houses where other members of the Adams family will provide you with a weapon that you can use, or they'll be used to enter into a building where you go and fight a boss. You'll definitely need these. Uh, I suggest that if you don't have any, the best place to farm them up is actually somewhere in the beginning of the game, or even some of the green blob monsters in the sewer as they drop a lot of power-ups. The yellow potion is called Invisibility Potion, but it actually makes you temporarily invulnerable. Next up we'll cover the missiles. Missiles are very useful in the game if you want to be able to hit enemies that you can't either A, hit normally, or B, trying to dodge. They'll basically fly around the screen, hitting enemies and doing damage. The noose is one of the best items in the game, but also the last item in the game that you'll get. It's very useful, it'll summon Lurch in, he'll destroy all enemies on the screen. It does not work on bosses. The red potion is used to restore your health. The TNT is useful for destroying large groups of enemies. They're powerful and they can take things out with one hit. It'll do a lot of damage, but only when an enemy makes contact with it, and it has a very small explosion. The gun power-up is what we'll discuss next. There's Two versions of it, red and blue. Blue will increase your power of your gun by one level, and the red will do the opposite, lower it by one level. The more powerful your weapon, the easier it is for you to defeat enemies, and it'll have a slightly different attack pattern. Next we have the whip. The whip functions exactly like the gun. You have blue and red for power-ups. The blue one will increase the level by one, and the red ones will decrease it by one. The whip, unlike the gun, only goes up to four levels and the whip is significantly more powerful than the gun. Uh, some examples are enemies that would typically take three or four shots from the gun can actually be hit with one shot from the whip. The drawback is that the whip isn't rapid fire, so even if you're using a turbo controller, you really gotta have good accuracy if you wanna land hits. But if you get skillful enough with the whip, it can definitely be a better option than the gun. The first boss is actually pretty easy. He'll swing left, right, and then both and he'll just continue to whip his arms. All you have to do, dodge, shoot, and keep this up until he's destroyed. The second boss, basically a repeat of the first. Only difference is now that it has whips, but it's gonna have the same strategy of left, right, left, right. The third boss will be the first real challenge for bosses you have in this game. He's invulnerable to damage up until he attacks you. When the boss attacks, he'll fire out three beams of lightning. One will be straight and the other two will go diagonal at about 45 degrees from where he is. So the best way to handle this is to move a little bit to the left or right as he's charging up and holding the sword above him. Aim upward and start firing into him. You'll only be able to get one or two hits in before he becomes invulnerable again. And then you just have to repeat this pattern until he's done. The fourth boss is similar to the third. Just shoot it, move left or right, shoot, move left or right. As you can see here, it's not too difficult, but it is time consuming. This next boss isn't too bad. I'll fire off three shots, kind of in the same arc as we've seen before. I'll have one going straight, and two going to the sides, and occasionally I'll fire off a fireball. Similar to the previous strategy, all I gotta do is move left and right, and just continue to shoot them. Ooh. 
Alright, and now we're ready for the final boss. Uh, first, you want to start off with your invisibility potion, the yellow one. And basically, you use that, stand where you are, and just shoot the boss. Continue to do that until you take out one of the turrets. If you still have invisibility potions, use one, and once the two turrets in the front are done, you want to walk over to here, where I am, on the right side, aim upwards, and we go over here, pick the missiles, and then we just stand here and use the missiles, because believe it or not, he can't hit you over here. I didn't actually know about this when I was a kid, but as a teenager I found this out, and this is very helpful. So the hardest part is basically making sure you live through the first onslaught where you have to take out the two turrets. Keep firing missiles and there you go, eventually he dies. And finally, if the game is still providing too much of a challenge, you can always just kind of cheat your way through all these boss fights. All you have to do is make sure you have one extra key when you go to fight the boss. Walk over here, with the key selected, press the A button, there's some kind of invisible door. Thing will give you the invisibility potion, and then the boss dies. Wait for the explosions to be done, and you'll be teleported outside as if you had beat the boss. And yes, this does work on the final boss. And there you have it, a complete guide to playing Fester's Quest. Hopefully this will give you a better understanding of how to play the game, and how to deal with some of the design flaws. Hopefully this guide will help you out for those of you that want to give it a shot. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thank you for watching this video.